Hello YouTube, Sir Penguin X here. There are a lot of rumors, falsehoods, fabrications, fictions, lies, misrepresentations, myths, delusions, deceptions, and alternative facts out on the internet about moving to Mexico. You've even got YouTubers pretending to be other YouTubers. Welcome to Almost Retired in Mexico, All Bull. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the things that you might hear about Mexico that are just bullshit. Coming up next, Mexico is unsafe. The U.S. State Department says that violent crimes such as homicide, kidnapping, carjacking, and robbery is widespread and common in Mexico. Let's look at this map and just paint this country here red. If you're a Canadian moving to Mexico, you might see more crime or violence. But if you're coming from the United States, you're going to be more safe. Unless you get involved in drugs and cartels. That's where the high murder rate is coming from. These are targeted. Kidnapping of tourists happens, but it's very uncommon. You're more likely to experience violent crime in the United States. There is property crime in Mexico. One of my subscribers just had his house burglarized six hours after he moved in. Thieves took their laptops and other electronics, so I'm working on a way to protect our computers while we're in Mexico. Americans and Canadians can't own property in Mexico. Not true. Lots of foreigners own property in Mexico. If you're within about 30 miles of the coast, then you need to form a corporation or more commonly establish a bank trust called a fideicomiso. You'll pay about $500 per year for that trust and your real estate agent and lawyer will set it all up. Closing takes a little longer in Mexico, but there's almost zero risk with a fideicomiso. I'll make another video specifically about the fideicomiso. I really think this is a great system because I know of a property where the Mexican owner won't sell to gringos. Friends of ours tried to buy it for full price. I think there's something going on with the title of this property and the owner doesn't want to sell when a bank is involved because then those discrepancies will come to light. Of course, if you're more than 62 miles from the border or 31 miles from the ocean, you don't need a fita camiso. For example, in San Miguel de Allende, where Ernie from Retired in Mexico, Noble lives. I'm planning to do a video with Ernie soon, so be sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already. And also check out Ernie's channel too. You can get a 180 day visa. You cannot get a 180 day visa. Nothing is that straightforward in Mexico. If anyone says something definitively, they're lying. As I make this video in the summer of 2022, some airports like La Paz and Puerto Vallarta are giving all visitors 180 days in the country when they arrive. This is written into your passport in a new paperless system. But land borders and most other airports aren't on the new system yet. And I'm sure that once the new system is up and running everywhere, the 180 day, the 180 day visa guarantee will go away too. And it really depends on which immigration agent processes your documents. One could be giving seven day visas and the next one over could be giving 180 days. Healthcare is third world. The healthcare system in Mexico is great. Lots of people go to Mexico as medical tourists and it's not just dental crowns and liposuction. I made a video with Matt who spent months in Mexico getting cancer treatment where he, which he could not afford in the United States. He showed me videos from the inside of the cancer center and the equipment was modern and in some cases, the facilities were nicer than you'd find in the US. I have another video about a simple doctor visit for an infected cut on my toe. The total cost was $17 for the visit and the medicine. The doctor's office was a little dated, but the doctor spoke English, was very kind, and fixed my toe. Your American car insurance works in Mexico or your credit card provides insurance. One of the unfun things in Mexico is renting a car. You need insurance in Mexico and it's not always clear if that's included in the advertised price. If the car rental costs $7 a day, you're probably going to need to pay for insurance before you drive off. 
And if you're driving across the border, you're going to need to buy insurance beforehand. If you were to get into a car accident, you need to prove your insurance will cover the associated costs. Almost all U.S. policies will state that they don't apply south of the border. And your credit card may reimburse you for the damage of the rental, but the Mexican police need to see the cash or real insurance at the time of the accident. And you could end up in jail if you don't have all this. For driving your car across the border, you can buy insurance online 24 hours a day. And you can buy it by the day, the month, or the year. The longer the term, the better the deal. With rentals, you'll pretty much need to buy insurance from the rental company, and that can be expensive. Cinco de Mayo is a Mexican holiday, about as Mexican as a hard shell taco from Taco Bell. Cinco de Mayo is the celebration of a specific battle in a small town. That town celebrates, but otherwise, this is a U.S. holiday. Mexicans celebrate their independence in September. One thing that I love about making these videos is interacting in the comments. Viewers add so much down there. If you're watching and there's a bit of bullshit that I didn't mention, I want you to put it in the comments. You can get any prescription drug that you want in Mexico. When you cross the border, you'll see signs outside pharmacies listing off Cialis and Propecia and Latisse for sale. They're mostly legit. The system in Mexico is different. There are often doctors associated with pharmacies, and if you need a prescription, you can visit that doctor. But many things require no prescription, and the person behind the pharmacy counter may not be a pharmacist. Drugs are all prepackaged, so there's no little bottles with your name and doctor printed on them. A lot of what we call over-the-counter drugs that you'd find in the aisles of a supermarket in the U.S. Are, are actually behind the counter in Mexico, but you just ask and they hand them to you. There are some drugs that require a doctor visit first, like antibiotics. They are much more serious about antibiotics in Mexico. It's not hard to get a prescription, but that's just one more layer. We couldn't find things like triple antibiotic ointment in Mexico, so we bring it down from the United States. There are drugs like Adderall and Sudafed that are not sold in Mexico and you're not supposed to bring them in. Always bring your prescription in the original bottle, but note that prescriptions from the U.S. may not matter in Mexico, so you could still get into legal trouble. The cops are all corrupt. Okay, some cops are corrupt. In Mexico, that is much more likely to show up uh, as asking for bribes during traffic infractions. It can be scary, and it's often a bluffing game. The corrupt cop wants some money, and if you don't give it to them, then they are more likely to let you go than to drive two hours to the police station with you. That's counterproductive for both of you. I've heard that about 200 pesos or 10 US dollars is often a reasonable amount if you decide to bargain with the cops. I'm much more a fan of asking for the ticket or asking to go to the police station but every situation is different, and I can understand that sometimes it can be better to pay up on the spot. Now, this is controversial. I'll probably get a lot of opinions in the comments on this statement. If you want to watch a video solely about that, Q RuPaul posted a great video just a couple days ago. You can find a link to that up here. Finally, Mexico paid for the wall. Now, they may have if Trump had asked nicely as Mexicans are incapable of saying no. But actually, they would have just said yes and then never followed through. I really need to do a video about saying no in Mexico. It's impolite. You just need to learn when yes means yes and when yes means no. So did I miss anything? Add to the conversation in the comments below. And if the video with me and the real Ernie from Retired in Mexico, No Bull is ready, you'll find it up here. Otherwise, I put something special for you up here. See you soon.